one of the worst case scenarios for any photographer is for their shutter to break. And that's what happened to me. So here are a few things that I learned along the way and the steps that I took to get it fixed. The month of May is an especially busy time for me as I'm out at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway shooting either cars on track or somewhere in the Indianapolis area shooting something to do with the Indianapolis 500. So that's the worst possible time for a worst case scenario to happen, but of course, it happened. It was the first day of main on track activity at the track and I'm out in turn one of the road course and the car, as the cars enter turn one they kind of turn in to like turn two so that's kind of where I was at and I'm shooting throughout the day everything's going perfectly fine midway through the afternoon it broke something went wrong I don't know exactly at this point what it was but I just see an error and my camera's not working. So I've had errors in the past and they've been all kinds of different situations that have happened. But most of the time, if I kind of keep shooting, the most of the time it's the mirror. It will kind of fix itself and no harm, no foul. It'll get bright up and working again. A lot of times this happens whenever you're using the camera hard and you're shooting uh, lots of photos in a very short period of time or if you're out in the heat and both of those scenarios were happening. I was out in the heat, it was hot outside and I was also working the camera pretty hard. So I just figured it was something that would kind to fix itself like it has many times in the past but it didn't that's actually one of the things that I learned in this process if you see an error stop shooting in the past I've just kept shooting and it's kind of fixed itself but I learned during this process and I'll talk about this a little bit more later on stop shooting it'll save you money in the long run so eventually I realized that it wasn't going to fix itself so I just went back to the media center uh, where I could kind of sit down the camera could cool down a little bit if that was part of the problem and, but I mainly so I could get back to the media center and look it up kind of look up the error message and look on the inside of it see if I could actually figure out what it was. I was able to take my lens off I believe I had a 300 2.8 on at the time it could have been a longer lens but I'm pretty sure it was a 300 2.8 so I was able to get back um, test out different lenses uh, to make sure that it was actually the camera body so I put several other lenses on none of them worked so I quickly realized that it wasn't the lenses problem it was the camera itself um, still couldn't necessarily 100% find out what it was so I went into shutter uh, to where you can lock it up like for lint like if you were to uh, clean the sensor so I went to do that and you could clearly see and I'll show a picture here that the uh, curtain the shutter curtain was broke it's plain as day exactly what the problem is and it was a bummer, obviously, seeing that. I went around to some of the other photographers in the room. Um, none of them actually had actually seen a broken shutter uh, either, but it's pretty much, like I said, clear as day what it is. Anybody can look at that and tell that it's a broken shutter. Luckily, the organization that I work with, they were able to loan me out a D4, um, so I was able to use that for a few days, but I did wind up buying another D750 from my local camera store. They had a good deal going on where uh, it was actually on sale, and you also got the Nikon battery grip, which is expensive. Uh, anyway, so I just went ahead and bought the D750 while I sent my broken D750 into Nikon. So I was finally able to get my uh, camera sent out on, it was like Sunday night, so it didn't actually go into the mail until Monday, but on Sunday night, I believe it was like May 6th, and then on May 10th, I got an email from Nikon acknowledging that they, ever, that they received my camera. From the point that they actually received it on May 10th, it actually took a long time for them to send me a quote, which was kind of a little bit frustrating. Um, it, I, I am a part of Nikon Pro Services, NPS, so my camera was supposed to kind of go to the front of the line a little bit, as any member of NPS, their camera is supposed to do. Um, so I was a little bit frustrated that it took so long, but finally on May 21st, I got a quote from them. So it took, you know, a good week, week and a half to finally get my quote back from them. And I'm looking at the quote now, and it's exactly what I expected. Uh, the reason it says is the broken shutter curtain at 135,000 shutters. Uh, that's not bad. I think the D750 is rated to about 150,000 or so, so it broke at 135. The 150,000 or any for any camera, you know, it, it can it can vary from 100,000 to 500,000. You know, it, it all just varies on the type of camera that you have. And if you look it up, um, just Google search, you know, your camera model for any, you know, Nikon, Sony, uh, Canon, it doesn't matter. Just do a little Google search and then put uh, like shutter rating and it'll probably come up. And that's not 100% what it's going to be. It'll just kind of give you a rough estimate. So again, it was rated 150,000 and mine broke at roughly 135. It's not too bad. And it was actually cheaper than I thought to fix it. They quoted me at $246.40 to fix it. 
Um, and then NPS numbers get a discount. So I got about a $50 discount on that. Uh, shipping and handling was 15 uh, plus tax. The total came out to $227. At least that's what I thought it was gonna be. Fast forward three days and I got a new quote estimate from Nikon. I was actually out shooting race cars at this point and uh, my phone vibrated and I was got an email from Nikon. And I was like, sweet, they fixed it and they sent it out to me. Uh, well, I read it and it said no, another quote, and I downloaded the PDF on my phone. Like I said, I was out shooting and it sucked. It, the, new, the new quote came out to $613. The problem that they found was that not only was the shutter curtain broke, but it also they found scratches slash damage on the sensor. It doesn't say what caused the scratches or, this, um, or the damage to the sensor, but I know that prior to the shutter breaking, the sensor was fine. Um, it had a little bit you know, of dots on it, debris, you know, uh, just like any sensor does after using it for a certain amount of time because it had been a while before I had the sensor cleaned. But other than that, it had fine. There were no, no damage that I noticed or anything like that. So the only thing that possibly could have happened was that once the shutter curtain broke originally, and I kept shooting, hoping that it would fix itself or the air would go away. The broken shutter had to scratch the sensor. So that, again, is back to the original um, thing that I learned from this, was that once the air comes up, stop shooting because it could cause more damage. And that's exactly what happened to me. So instead of having to pay $246, uh, pre-discounts and everything, it was $613. It's quite a big difference. Um, so... That sucked. So the new quote was 613.78. I had a Nikon repair discount, uh, NPS discount of $122 plus shipping and handling and tax. The total came out to $542. Still not terrible considering that they replaced the shutter and the sensor as well, but it sucks. The $246, $227 after discount would have been a lot better. But I had no other choice, so I went ahead and approved it. And within a few days, they were able uh, to get the work done. And actually, it didn't take long at all. From, uh, from the moment I approved this on, I think I said the 24th, I think is what I said. Um, I received, yeah, May 24th is whenever I approved it. It was fixed, and I received the camera exactly one week later on the next Thursday, which I believe was May 31st. Um, the negative part to that is that I had to leave. We left out to go shoot the IndyCar race in Detroit on 7 a.m. on that Thursday morning. And my Nikon D750 was delivered. Uh, the repaired version was delivered at like 10 a.m. that morning. Of course, that's the way it works. Uh, so I missed out on another uh, race weekend using my camera uh, because it was in transit. But they did send it overnight, I believe, through, I think it was UPS. So they do a good job of getting it handled, handled, at least from the point that you approve it to the point that you receive it. Again, for me, it was only a week, so that's not too bad. Um, I wish that the approval process, and it took um, less time for them from the point they received it to the point that you get your original quote. I wish they would kind of narrow that down a little bit. Um, and then also, I wish that they would have noticed the sensor damage the first quote. That would have saved two or three days as well. Um, but all in all, I'm pretty happy. They did a good job. Um, the camera works perfectly fine now. The, all the settings were the same, and I didn't have to mess with any of my settings, so they were able to keep all my settings, um, even though they repaired the sensor and the shutter. So that was nice whenever I got it back. I didn't have to go through and reset all my different settings um, and things like that. So the three things I learned through this whole process. Number one, Nikon Pro Services, NPS is really good to have. I actually have a video on this if you want to look back at it a little bit. And things have changed a little bit, I believe, since that video, but it gives you a good idea of what NPS uh, is and how to get involved in it. It's free, so why not? I got a discount um, of, I think it was 20%, I think is what it comes out to. So that's a good deal for something that's free. And all in all, to get involved with it, it only takes probably an hour of work, probably, and you can be done with it. Um, also, to always be prepared. You always have to have backup cameras or be involved with an organization who hopefully can provide you backup cameras. Because when things like this go wrong and you're out on a job shooting, uh, you know, you know, your client, you can't go to them and say, you know, my camera broke, you know, they still want images. So you always have to be prepared. And the third and final thing is, if you see an error on your camera, stop shooting. I should have learned this, I should have known this before, but I didn't do it and it cost me 400-ish dollars. 
So that taught me a lesson for sure. Anytime I see error messages, I will definitely stop shooting, get it back, get it looked at, and don't just keep shooting. I was stupid, I'm an idiot. Thanks for watching, I hope you got a little bit of something out of this. Uh, be sure to subscribe, and if you have any questions or comments, you can comment below, or you can message me. Thanks for watching.